every distribution has an associated set of p-values because every distribution can be converted into a probability distribution. Now, some distributions are more important than others because they are used more often than others. And the most important distribution in like all of statistics, maybe even all of the entire universe, is the normal distribution, aka the bell curve, aka the Gaussian distribution, aka the standard distribution. It has so many names because it's so important. And there are specific combinations of p-values and z-values that I think are so frequent, they come up so often, that I think it's worth committing to memory. Not only for, uh, you know, if you're doing this for a course in an exam, you might be asked to uh, report these numbers, but if you are moving into a career that will involve a lot of data analysis, statistics, machine learning, then I think it's really useful to uh, commit these, um, these values that I'm going to tell you in this lecture to memory. Trust me, you will be thankful. I memorized these things like, God, it was probably about 20 years ago, I guess, when I took my uh, Stats 101 course in university. And I memorized them and I still use these numbers pretty often. Okay, so first we're going to start off actually not with uh, p-values, we're going to start off just with z-values and proportion of data. So here we have our bell curve, this is our normal standard Gaussian distribution. And remember that one of the great things about the standard distribution is that the units here are in standard deviations. So when you have a population or a sample that is distributed according to a Gaussian, then we can say that 68.3% of the data are contained within two standard deviations around the mean. And by two, just to be clear, I mean one minus one standard deviation to plus one standard deviation. So we can take the uh, practical example of IQ, IQ tests. The average IQ test score is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So that means if we take the average standard, uh, the average IQ score minus one standard deviation to plus one standard deviation, so that gets us from an IQ test score of 85 to uh, 115, we can say that 68.3% of all people who take the IQ exam are in between one standard deviation of the mean on both sides, so in this boundary of two standard deviations. Okay, and then we go out further and we get to four standard deviations around the mean, which means minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations, and that is 95.5% of the data. So for any given distribution that is Gaussian distributed, 95.5% of the data points in that distribution are between minus two and plus two standard deviations around the mean. Okay, and then the outer boundary here is three standard deviations, and that includes 99.7% of the data. So you can see very, it's very, very rare to be more than three standard deviations away from the mean of a Gaussian distribution. So these numbers you should commit to memory, in my opinion, I recommend it. Okay, so this is just about Z values and uh, proportion of the data set. So here we get to um, PZ pairs. This is actually the title of this uh, lecture. So for a one-tailed test, I'm gonna show you the two-tailed test on the next slide. For a one-tailed test, a Z value of 1.64 corresponds to a P value of 0.05. So what does that mean? That means if we take 0.05 as our statistical significance threshold, then finding a P value of 0.05 means that our observed data are 1.64 standard deviations away from the mean of the null hypothesis distribution. That's what this means. Conversely, if we go for a p-value threshold of 0.01, then we say that our observed test statistic must be more than 2.32 standard deviations away from the mean of the null hypothesis distribution in order for us to consider that effect to be statistically significant at a p-value threshold of 0.01. Okay, and then 0.001 is a z-value of 3.09. So these are the one-tailed z-values. 
here we get the two-tailed z values. And remember, from the previous lecture, the end of the previous lecture, in general, you always want to do uh, two-tailed tests unless you have a really, really good, compelling reason to do a one-tailed test. Okay, so p equals 0.05 corresponds to a z value of 1.96. Now, these z values are actually larger than the previous slide because these are two-tailed. So this means, uh, I, actually, I guess I probably should have written this plus minus 1.96 because this corresponds to plus 1.96 on the right, minus 1.96 over here. P-value of 0.01 corresponds to a z-value of 2.58, and a p-value of 0.001 corresponds to a z-value of 3.29, so almost 3.3. And again, to repeat the interpretation, what this means is that if you say that I'm going to use a p-value threshold of 0 0.001 as a significance threshold, then the effect that you observe in your sample data, in your experimental data, that effect must be more than 3.29 standard deviations away from the mean of the null hypothesis distribution in order to consider that effect to be statistically significant. And again, this is plus or minus, so it's either 3.3 3 standard deviations over here or 3.3 3 standard deviations off to the left, depending on the direction of the effect. So there you go, some uh, z-value and proportion data that are worth committing to memory, and some p-value and z-value pairs that are also worth committing to memory.